Hey guys, Kakarot197 again. This time to review of the 144 scale high grade Universal Sentry Gundam Mark II from the Zeta Gundam series. And man, do these Titans colors look amazing as always. A bit shiny with some obvious seam lines on the legs, the arms and the head, but awesome nonetheless. It's a really good thing that the proportions make up for that, and considering the time, Bandai did a great job for color accuracy on the mobile suit itself. But you might want to paint the purple weapons grey to enhance their look. For stickers, we get the usual eye stickers and a really nice metallic green sticker for the main camera and the back camera. Now we don't get the same really cool sticker for the sensors on the chest or for the scopes of the weapons, but you could always cut those out yourselves. Being the Mark II, we also get clear marking stickers allowing you to designate your Mark II as either Unit 1, 2 or 3. On to articulation. The head is on a single ball joint, goes a little bit up, a little bit down, rotates around all the way. And the arms is where things get pretty interesting, go a little bit forwards, a little bit backwards, and even a little bit upwards, which was a pretty big deal in 2002. And the arms also go up like that, rotate around below the shoulder, bent at the elbow on a single joint, and then the hands are on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around, and do everything a ball joint does. Then to the back, we also get movement on these back thrusters, which are on a ball joint, so they are pretty nicely articulated. Unfortunately, this hose isn't a hose on the market and just a plastic piece, meaning that they won't go down without cutting that. Then the waist will rotate around all the way. Front skirts are, as always, molded together, but can be separated. And the legs go forwards nicely like that. Backwards slightly less because the back skirt ain't moving. The legs go out nicely like that. We'll rotate around a little bit on that ball joint, then bend at two joints at the knee. Not too bad for the time. And then the feet are on a single ball joint, backwards, forwards, rotate around, some side to side movement, and also a nice toe joint, just in case you want the flying armor for your Titans Mark II. While it might seem somewhat archaic by today's standards, this kit had some amazing articulation back in 2002, and I would say that it still holds up relatively well today. For accessories, we're getting everything you'd want your Mark II to have. A head-mounted Vulcan pod, beam rifle, hyper bazooka, a shield, and a single beam chopstick molded into the hand, moving along. The Vulcan pod is a simple but effective piece. Nothing moves and it fits snugly on the head, severely limiting sideways movement. The beam rifle features a movable handle, allowing the Mark II to hold onto it with both hands. Unfortunately, despite having holes in the side skirts that look like they're a perfect match for the pegs on the end of the rifle, they don't match and you can't store your rifle anywhere. The bazooka also features a movable handle so that you can easily use it both over and under the shoulder and unlike the beam rifle, it can be used in both the right trigger finger hand or the left holding hand. In fact, the bazooka actually fits kind of loose into the right trigger finger hand as opposed to the very snug fit into the left holding hand. So dual wheeling really is the way to go. Or you could always sort it on the back skirt so that you have the left hand free for the... Oh yeah, the chopstick came with a dismembered right hand attached. In more positive news, the beam saber handles on the backpack are fully functional and will take 144 scale beam effect parts, which are not included, nor is a regular right holding hand included, meaning that if you want your Mark II to hold a beam saber in the right hand without a trigger finger sticking out, you're gonna have to deal with the single beam chopstick. For defensive purposes, we get this really cool shield that has two undetailed spare EPEX for the beam rifle hardwired to it. 
Also, you can't remove the E-Pack of the Beam Rifle. But hey, that's something we'd expect from a Master Grade, am I right? The shield mounts onto the arm via a mounting bracket with two positions and can be put in either extended mode or collapsed mode. And that's all for the included accessories. However, things don't just end there. The later release Jim Quill and Hazel kits were made backwards compatible with parts of this kit, officially to create an unnamed machine in their manual, which is the closest to the next generation prototype mobile suit. A name that really rolls off the tongue. But of course, you can let your imagination run wild. Just be careful because possible side effects include Hazel Madness. And talking about compatibility, it also works with the G Defensor. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? Well, with the newer Hagrid Middle Century Mark II Revive being a thing, you'd probably expect this to be a resounding, no, get the newer one, right? Well, not in this case. Sure, the Revive version does have much better articulation and much less seam lines, but the old version manages to counter this by having more faithful and, in my opinion, better proportions. Combine that with a retail price of only 1,000 yen versus 1,500 yen of the revived version, and you've got a kit with a lot of bang for your buck, especially considering that the revived version decided to make its backpack and head Vulcans incompatible with the Hazel line. Something very important to consider if you've got a bad case of the Hazel Madnesses. So why not pick up one, two, three, or more? Do it. So for size comparisons, first of all, here is next to his mass production counterpart, the Barzan, and next to the massive Advanced Hazel. Then here is next to the Hyzak and an actual Zaku. And finally, here is next to the standard size Gym Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that's all for this review, and see you all next time.